Indeed, as you saw the date there, 28th of February is that date where the Rare Diseases Day will be marked for the first time here in Kenya. And I'm joined to have a better understanding of these diseases by Faith Njahira, who's founder of uh, Muscular Dystrophy Society of Kenya. Did I get that right? Yes. Oh, and we have Christine Mutena, who's a parent of two uh, children who have rare diseases and founder of Stepping Stones Kenya as well. Thank you both for being part of our show today. Okay. Um, I'll begin with you, Faith. Rare diseases, when you hear that, um, first you wonder, okay, does it, is it rare because we've never heard of it before? It's just that very few people are affected. Take us through, uh, when talking about rare diseases, what we mean. I think first when you hear about rare diseases, yeah. uh, these, it's because number one, very few people have these conditions and diseases. Yeah. Then number two, also, the, they're not, there's not enough information out there. Not enough people are ready to come out and uh, champion and create awareness. Mm -hmm. Mostly we find that if somebody is directly affected or indirectly, maybe through a member of their family, that's when they'll come out and try to create awareness. Mm -hmm. So that's part of why I guess they're called rare diseases. Yeah, yeah, mostly because very few people. So yeah. then in a world where we have billions, nobody is talking about it much. But you... Uh, have a rare disease. Talk us through that. Yes, yeah, so I have muscular dystrophy, mm -hmm. which is a condition that causes, it's a degenerative, it's a, it's a progressive condition that causes the degeneration or slow loss of muscle power, which means that uh, now the dystrophy part of the word, yeah. it's a, there's a protein in the body that allows our bodies to do those small tasks, mm -hmm. like when you want to stand up. You don't have to write your body a memo and tell you them know, like, you're yeah, going to be standing. Yeah, standing up. Yeah. yeah. So, but now when the dystrophy in part of the muscles, that protein, when it's depleted, then slowly it's not as automatic. When you want to stand up, I have to hold on to something to actually get mm. up from a seat. Mm -hmm. If I want to walk faster, I have to debate with my mind, how fast are you going to walk? Are there pebbles on the way? Are you going to fall? All those things. Yeah. So then it's a it's a condition that also does not have a cure. Currently oh. in the world, um, there are researchers who are doing a lot of work to try and find a cure for mm -hmm. the condition, muscular dystrophy. But as yet, there are so many trials here and there, but none has been successful. Yeah. yeah. And, and when did you find out you had the condition? I started noticing the signs of being different when I was 10. Mm -hmm. When I, I used to be last, every Tuesday and Thursday we had a school sports day where everybody had to run around the field. Yeah. So I realized I'm not as fast as my classmates. Then slowly, slowly I realized stairs are uh, uh, hell. Yeah, oh, tedious. Yeah, yeah, very tedious or you have to be very careful. If you miss one step, you're going to be on the ground mm. very fast and you may not even be able to break the fall. Mm -hmm. Then slowly things become a bit more challenging because now that your body muscles become weaker and weaker. And weaker. Right? Yeah. Okay, and we'll continue to talk about that. Christine, for you, it's two of your children. Yeah. Um, take us through just, you know, finding out what age are they and also the condition or disease that they suffer from. Um, first one is seven years, mm -hmm. second one is two and a half. Both of them are, <coughs> the thing with rare diseases, you find that 80% of it is genetic and 50% of that is found in children. Mm. And um, for my kids, it's both genetic. So there's nothing, um, it's the first one was, it was discovered, I think, when at birth. The second one was more of symptoms of, oh, she can't do this, she has delayed milestones, she has this, she has that. But mm. finally, through genetic testing, which is not done in Kenya, is not now when you've got to get the, you know, the actual problem. Okay. The first one has a condition called hemihypertrophy and hydrocephalus. Mm -hmm. The second one has, it's called ring 18 chromosome. Okay. So you say it's not done in Kenya. Um, so it must have been quite a scary experience. What is it you began to see or notice in the children that got you to seek medical attention, realize you're not getting the answers here, and then where did you go to seek it after that? I think it started with the, f <coughs> Sorry, with the first one because mm -hmm. at least her, when they noticed it at birth, we had a lot of follow-ups with her pediatrician. Mm. So we really had a lot of um, doctor visits and everything and we knew fine there's genetic testing but for her it's okay, whatever she has we just have to manage and she's good to go. Mm -hmm. But when the second one came and she's not hitting her milestones as she is and she has 
this happening like she has a hole in the heart she has this she has that so we were like you know given the first instance let's check on the second one and just make sure there's nothing much you're dealing with it's mm -hmm. just now when we did that we realized wait this is something totally bigger than what you were thinking so it mm -hmm. became yeah and where did you go to seek uh, attention outside the country you said i haven't no the testing is genetic testing is not done in kenya okay, they okay. do the blood and then they send it out i think the closest they do is south africa oh, okay then or then they bring have, it back yeah, then they bring it back so you find that um and it's very costly so you find that even if you have this and you're told you have this condition there's not much that can be done because then again as she says there's no cure so it's more of management. So it's mm -hmm. not like I can ship her off somewhere and have it sorted out and come back all happy. So it's more of living with it mm. and um, learning to to manage it yeah. day by day, symptom yeah. by symptom. And yeah. And then on. another child and a different, what's the, the, you said the other child suffers from what? She has ring 18. Yeah. And the same thing, again, you discover with time going through the visits, yeah. there's no answer coming through yeah. from the local um, from no. the doctors actually internet is a very good thing Thank yeah you, Google. yeah <laughs> internet is a very good thing because then you get to meet guys outside who have um gone through it mm -hmm. who at least have some way forward like she was saying trials here trials there so at least you know there's hope out there because most of the time you find we know more than the doctors because we've googled we've checked we've mm -hmm. liased with guys outside who are going through the same mm -hmm. and here they don't know because they have not gone through it. They have not. not. So you'd Google the symptoms to, to get an or understanding? Or the name, yes. Okay. Mm. Or right. once you're given the diagnosis, you yeah. go out and see what, what is there and All what right. the world has to uh, and, and phase 10, you discovered a 10, mm. it's degenerative. How old do you know if you don't mind sharing? Um, 24. 24. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for you, no cure, as, as you said, and things are getting worse with your body, it's managing. How has those last what, 14 years been like? Uh, I can say it's, it's been quite okay. It's been very, well, it can be challenging. Yeah. But having supporting friends and family is really is a very big thing. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you have a special need, because it is a special need, right. then you, your times can sit back and think, oh, you know, the society tells you, especially the word disability, I'm really insisting on the special need because disability means there's this and that that you can't do. Right. But that's what the society tells us. So for me, it was really, you know, my family, my family pushing me, everybody would set standards. You have to do this. If your classmates are doing this, you you better, must, yeah, yeah, you better do that. So I, I had very little time to think about what is happening in my body mm. and thinking. I, I set goals for myself at some point. I want to do this. Uh, like in primary, I knew I wanted to be a special needs teacher, maybe because of my special need. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, no, even sitting here and thinking, yes, I've actually achieved that. I've done, I did now special education and did learning disabilities. Good. For me, it's a big yes. Yeah. Then, uh, well, so the other people, uh, personally, I was very lucky to get a therapist who was very positive. Because mm. even as he realized it's muscular dystrophy, when you Google, there are, few, there are nine types of muscular dystrophy. Mm -hmm. And there's one, there's a one that affects boys, which progresses much faster. And it affects very young boys when they're still young. Right. So most therapists and doctors, they go out and give like a death sentence where you go to a de doctor and they give you the diagnosis and mm -hmm. they're like, uh, if you're six, by the time you're 12, I don't think you'll be walking. And by the time you're 15, eh, your lungs will have given up. Yeah. And your heart will follow suit. By the time you're 18, you might not even live to be 18. So there are those, uh, through now the Facebook page, Muscular Dystrophy Society, mm -hmm. I've, uh, when I started it last, last year, I, I only knew two more people. But now I know 15 people okay. in Kenya who wow. have the same condition. Yeah. And most of them were sitting and thinking they're the only ones mm. because they knew they've now heard of anybody else with the same condition. Right. Yeah. And are you the only one in your family? No, I have an older brother who yeah. has the same condition too. Okay. Yeah. All right. And for you, you have the two kids. What about anybody else in your lineage? No. Nobody. No. Um, so you have, you're both in organizations that you founded. So. For you, was it a need to find somebody you could relate with, somebody you could identify with, uh, to feel that I'm not in this alone? What what led you to form this uh, foundation? Personally, it's uh, I've been thinking of 
like from 10 years up until around 19, I was really looking for information. Then after Form 4, we looked in hospitals, we went to different specialists, neurologists, mm -hmm. uh, general uh, physicians, and none of them gave us an answer. Yeah. Actually, the one who actually gave us the final answer is our occupation therapist. Mm. But now for me, it was it was a relief. It was a very big sigh of relief, yeah. knowing finally have a name to this condition that's affecting my body. So I wanted to go out there and tell those people out there who are wondering what's happening to my mm, body. Mm. Because I think when you're all growing up, you're thinking, if I'm running from here to school in 20 minutes, maybe when I'm in, if you're in class four, maybe at the time in class five, we'll be using 10 minutes, you right. know, less time. So when you realize that you're not progressing as fast, it can be disturbing. It can so be yeah. disturbing. Yeah. Um, Christine, you, it's children. And so w when you're dealing with children, it's fast from the point where they don't understand why some things are not working the way for other kids they work or happen. Um, are there the point where they understand what is going on with their bodies? Have you had this conversation? Mm, not yet. Not yet. It hasn't reached there yet. It has not reached there. But um, as she said, we are encouraging, encouraging them to think that they are not different. Mm. That there is nothing special about them because they have to be the best that they can be. Because mm -hmm. the minute you start treating them as special, then they act special. Yeah. So we just give them the same goals as you would a normal kid, if yeah. I can call them that. And yeah. Let them pick it up from there. And your foundation, Stepping Stones Kenya, what is that about? It's um, it's an online Facebook group mm -hmm. for uh, parents with special needs, not necessarily um, any specific. You have parents with cerebral palsy, kids, Down syndromes, autism, name it. Mm -hmm. And how it came about was last year, it hit me, there's nowhere I can go and vent to somebody who will and tell me, I know what you're talking about, you know. And sometimes, <laughs> ironically, that's all you need. Just even if it's a hug from somebody who gets you. So that was more, of, I think, frustration, yeah. <laughs> how it was started. But yeah. um, as of yesterday, I think I have 180 members. Wow. And it's really helped, because you find guys are now like getting out of the closet mm -hmm. and saying, yes, my child has this, or I have this, mm -hmm. or my niece, nephew, name it, has this. Mm -hmm. And guys sharing more, guys sharing, um, where can I take my child to school? Where is the best? Um, physiotherapist, where is the best thing. So there's a lot of information exchange that's normally not out there, but yeah. now on Stepping Stones you find that you can, it's like a big family. It's like a big family, which mm -hmm. helps a support yeah. group, uh, supporting each other. And I guess what makes this very complicated and difficult for everyone who either is dealing with a condition or with loved ones is that misdiagnosis, even in trying to figure it out, happen, yeah. must happen a lot because nobody knows it's rare. So they're all trying to figure it out, and there's not enough information uh, out there. So talking about the rare disease day, which is coming up, and I notice you both have ribbons. I hope that is <laughs> on, uh, it's yeah. a ribbon, yeah? yeah it is. <laughs> okay. Um, so talk us through what efforts yourselves with your organizations and others are doing to make sure that it doesn't become such a heavy, strenuous process for one with a condition or a disease or with a loved one with the same. Let's we'll start with you. Uh, first. The main thing we're doing or I'm doing is making sure that everybody that I know or anybody that knows somebody that I know mm. knows there's something like muscular dystrophy. Because uh, when you're walking around, when I'm walking, people will not know that I'm any different. Yeah. Until maybe I'm on the ground and I can't get up mm. and I need help to mm. get up. Mm. And somebody's like, but you're okay. Uh, I've seen you working, so uh, trying to demystify mm -hmm. and also make sure that we don't discriminate is the main thing that we're trying to see. Okay. Because they, even the doctors trying to get maybe even the medical practitioners possibly to go out there. My hope is that one day we'll have some medical research going into those rare conditions in mm -hmm. Kenya right. and people trying to look for a way out of yeah. these conditions, yes. Okay. As you make your sentiments, also tell us, um, are the people involved? Where will it be happening? Is it an event or is it just a day and people, it's just to create awareness? Actually, um, it started like a month ago. Yeah. So right now we're just creating awareness to Kenyans mm -hmm. so that at least they know that there are rare diseases outside. Um, there are like between 6,000 and 7,000. There are various and not, um, and they're not easily detectable. And with Kenya, you find that there's something called new s newborn screening, mm -hmm. whereby they do gene genetic testing for all children born. That's why they do it in the developed countries. We don't do it here. 
And if we did it here, we'd pick 60, 70% of these okay. conditions early. So um, it's just more or less to tell Kenyans, look, this is out there. Don't treat your neighbor or, because it's usually the society you're trying to get. Mm -hmm. don't, don't treat your neighbor as he has a curse because he's different from, from you or whatever he's going through. You've never mm -hmm. seen it before, but it can be something that is honestly just all he yeah. needs is help. And funny enough, most of these conditions, as much as, as long as they are long life conditions, society support is the best mm -hmm. because may not, you may not be able to help me financially, but as she said, helping her get up. That's, that's good enough without yeah. questioning and her having to explain to you why you have to lift her up, why yeah. can't she get herself up. She looks fine, you know. Yeah. So basics and also the government to put in more, um, more into this because it's something that as much as it's rare not known, it's something that give, give a few years to come, mm. it's going to be so huge, it's going to now become an emergency. Yes. If we can curb it now, at least for our children or our children's children, children. it's going to be a better, yeah, a better future. Yeah. It's okay. Better and we love you both uh, for what you're doing, your strength to even just come and talk about it, to create that awareness. Very many people, I'm sure, watching this, um, getting to hear about this for the first time. And as you very well put it, it's all about that support, you know, uh, and having people who have an understanding and accommodating of everybody. And so if you want to get more information, uh, you can visit the pages around it's Facebook, right? So the Stepping Stones Kenya and also Dystrophy Society of Kenya will be posting um, the links. I'll tweet them and um, you can be able to follow up. Christine Mutena and uh, Faith in Jahira with us in studio. Thank you so much and the very best on the 28th. Keep us furnished to the details and we'll keep our viewers informed. Okay, okay. okay. So all the best. Uh, we're just about to bring this show to a close. We're glad you're watching. Let's. Uh, go to Bangla kiosk before we also sample some of your views we've been engaging with you as well in our question of the day and we have quite a number of your responses coming through and uh, of course a discussion also we had earlier with Chris Hart I'll read some of those when we return from Bangla